Good morning and uh, welcome back. Uh, for me, it was a great experience. I left here after the final, after the last session and went across the street to do the introduction and found out, whoops, I'm in the wrong place. Uh, I'm Mike Warlick, Vice President for Defense for FC International and, and thanks for joining the session today. This has been a, this has been a first class event from the moment it kicked off. Uh, even though it was set up, if you heard earlier, this is kind of the odd time of the year to do this as a makeup for last, uh, last November. Uh, but, uh, and we're not, uh, we're just barely uh, hitting the halfway point right now. So we're honored uh, this, this morning, uh, this afternoon now, to, uh, to hear from Bruce Sadaka Gordon. Uh, I've known Bruce for, for a long time, uh, and, uh, and through my, uh, my, my Marine Corps career and then out industry career, and I've watched him move around from place to place. He's moved more than most of us in this room have moved, uh, but he always lands on his feet in a different and new uh, challenging job. So his uh, topic this morning is gonna be operationalizing the Marine Corps Enterprise Network. You heard a bit about that during the last session. And I mentioned his name is Bruce Adaka Gordon. Many of you may know him, uh, Deputy Commander of the 3rd Marine Network Battalion. I've known him, as I mentioned just a second ago, as the first true as a service solution was provided to the Department of the Navy and Marine Corps through the NMCI program. So that's really where I first got to know him pretty well. And it wasn't all good news all the time, but it was, it was a, a great experience overall. And that's led to a kickoff of what industry is doing more and more of today, and that is as a service. And you heard this panel ask you for additional as a service support uh, to meet the mission requirements. So that's what we'll talk about. Uh, over the years, he's held positions as CIO of Commander Navy Installations Command Washington, D.C., CIO for Commander Navy North, Northwest, North Region Northwest. He's been the command, uh, also for the Commander uh, Navy Region Japan. So you can see that he's moved around from multiple jobs, moving with the technology and with some opportunities that he's uh, uh, been able to face over time. He's currently the Deputy Commander for the 3rd Network Battalion, and he's here today to share how the Marine Corps is operationalizing the Marine Corps Enterprise Network. Please join me in welcoming Bruce. Good morning or afternoon, everybody. It's so exciting to see everybody here, and I'm really appreciative that so many people came. Uh, when we were offered the opportunity to do this, I wasn't sure if this would be like five of the Marines that work in our detachment here, or if it would be 20, 30, 50, 100 people like this. I'm really excited uh, as a Marine and somebody that just loves the Marine Corps to know that so many people are interested. So today's brief uh, is going to include some videos and some things um, because uh, I'm really here on behalf of Colonel Mark Walker, our commanding officer. So that makes me kind of like a substitute teacher and good substitute teachers show videos in class. So um, I, d I do think that the videos that you'll see um, should be uh, eye-opening and it really sets a foundation for why the Marine Corps is doing this and why we have to do this. So here's a little welcome. The Marine Corps operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The ability to fight now is achieved through constant global communications. 3rd Network Battalion provides that capability to the Marines operating in the Indo-Pacific, covering nearly one-third of planet Earth. Unclassified and classified computer networks transport the mission critical information Marines need to fight battles and win wars. From logistics systems that deliver the bombs, bullets, and bayonets, myriad command and control systems, video conferencing that provide combat leadership, instant face-to-face -face collaboration, real-time battlefield information delivery, and programs that run the financial and business operations of the Corps, the networks supported by 3rd Network Battalion are a foundational part of the Marine Corps' ability to accomplish any mission. 24-7, securing, operating, and defending Marine Corps networks, 3rd Network Battalion enabling the fight. See, that is so much more motivating than anything I could do. Um, and, you know, I wish I could have that background music during this entire presentation. So just imagine that as I'm speaking through 
some of these slides. So the, the reality of what we're talking today um, with this crowd is probably nothing new. It definitely is nothing new for all of you because cyber warfare is something that's been on our minds for many, many years to come. Unfortunately, over the last six to eight weeks, we've seen the reality of what's happening uh, and how easy it is for people with a keyboard and a computer to do some pretty nefarious and bad things that can impact an entire uh, organization or even a nation. So um, if anybody had a chance to read this book, that quote in there really summed it up for me, the fact that the price of one helicopter could be an entire capability to destroy um, things uh, as large as an entire nation. So, and there's book after book after book about that. Um, I'm gonna share a video now that's actually really old and includes some people that are no longer with us, um, but the, the way that they saw into the future in this very short video is pretty amazing. Uh, and it and it's, reminds me every day of why the Marine Corps must have a network that is operational, that is going to work, that absolutely can meet the needs of the Marine Corps at the moment that the Marine Corps needs it. September 11, 2001 terror strikes set the tone for warfare in the 21st century. But the 21st century has also seen the rise of another kind of warfare. Warfare that lets nations and loners do battle without guns or bombs. These days, the biggest threat we face may be a rogue actor with a laptop and a desire to wreak havoc. Cyber warfare is probably the greatest challenge that we have as far as our nation's national security is concerned. We have an advantage over every other form of competition with possible allies except one, and that's cyber warfare. And when you see the potential of what a successful cyber attack can achieve, it's enough to make you uh, deeply concerned. This is going to be the new battlefield, an unseen, invisible battlefield where teams of hackers from various nations will duel. And remember as well with cyber warfare that the sort of barrier to entry is quite low. If a country wants to do something like build a nuclear missile, that's actually quite difficult. Uh, but when you talk about something like cyber warfare, it's actually quite cheap and quite easy for a country to develop a cyber weapon. And that cyber weapon can have equivalent effects. You could have a cyber weapon potentially shut down the power grid, for example, on the whole East Coast. New York is out, Wall Street is out, all your banks are out. You can't even withdraw money. You know, you can imagine people panic starting and people trying to get cash. You can't get cash, ATMs aren't working. Then things like your water waste treatment plants aren't working. There's no clean water. There's gonna be a run on stores. Stores potentially aren't even operating. Your credit card's not gonna work at the store. There'll be absolutely mass panic. If you can blind the US military, if you could shut down our GPS and our computer networks, our military is basically unable to function. And it could take days or weeks to get those systems back up and running. They can do tremendous damage. They can defeat your armies, your fleets, your air forces by simply blinding them, by taking down their cyber systems. I think that's a huge risk that we face. With cyber war, I always think one of the most effective ways to fight against cyber is to find the computer and the operator and put a bullet through both of them. It's a pretty powerful quote. Does anybody know that, Colonel? Uh, this is a pretty old video, but if you know him, let me know. I want to reach out to him because that's, that's pretty impressive. A bullet through the system and the operator, um, right? Talk about kinetic and cyber together. So let's see. So now we get to the nuts and bolts of what we're here to talk about today. So the Marine Corps Enterprise Network, it is not something new. Many of y'all in the room have heard about it for many years. But the reality is, is that the Marine Corps has now evolved to a point where we can make sure that this network is prepared, ready, and actionable to fight um, off of on the SIPR and NIPR domain. That's all we're talking about, on the SIPR NIPR classification. That's what we're talking about right now. So in order to get there, modernization was necessary. So under the old construct, right? So there's a couple of us in the room that go back to what, 2000, when NMCI was coming around. I'm, I'm looking at you, Bill. I was 
happy that that helped develop me, right? NMCI was not a four-letter word for me. It turned out to be one of the most fantastic money-saving and empowering things that uh, the Department of Navy ever had. Uh, but as the Marine Corps matured through that and we moved to these MAGTAF IT support centers, we created a situation where we could certainly execute providing the services needed, but we also created a situation where uh, there were seven different commanders in charge of each of those organizations. So there was no singular chain of command. There was no unified command. Um, and that's a problem when you're trying to operate in an environment like we have right now. So there were challenges, challenges so... Um, demonstrating the reality of the network's situation to the senior leadership, the most senior leadership in our country. Uh, if we had seven different organizations managing each segment of the network, it was kind of hard to get those put together. Um, also, the equipment, although uh, Marcor Syscom did a great job of doing centralized um, procurement, there was still a management aspect to the network uh, equipment and it wasn't really unified in the way that it needed to be. And finally, inspecting it all, right? As you can imagine, if you have, you know, uh, seven different units globally spread out, it's kind of hard to become an inspectable uh, organization. And all of those things were fixed with this new McSend C2, the new way that we're doing business. So what we did is we created new organizations. Six brand new organizations were created across the Marine Corps. Three network battalions that are 05 level command, slated commanders um, uh, in the locations that you can see there. Uh, and then also on top of that, three network activities. And the activities are led by civil servants and they report directly to MACOG. So now we have three full commands with a commander which makes which makes the ability to have that command, commander to commander relationship happen in the locations that we have our three MEFs. And then we have the activities that allow all of those business, uh, uh, business organizations that rely on the McSen to do their jobs have that level of leadership and have that level of capability. Plus you see the reserves, Europe and Africa. So if you see the, the picture there, those little tiny dots are the AO um, that we operate in, in Third Network Battalion. Everybody here should be familiar with them. This is the Indo-Pacific AFCEA conference and that is our uh, area of responsibility as well. So our mission is very simple. Operate, secure, and defend the McSen. There is, of course, a much longer document that is published somewhere, but the bottom line is, that's what we do. We operate, secure, and defend the McSend. And defend is one area where we have growth, right? Because now we're getting into defensive cyber operations, which is a little different than being an ISSM or making sure some paperwork is in place. We're actually now looking at using the tools that many of the vendors in this conference are selling and using the capability sets that are provided to us for our uh, brand new 1721 MOS, which are our cyber defender MOSs in the Marine Corps, and having those folks at the battalion level. So that's a big change for us. Um, the key takeaway, though, is that the 3rd Network Battalion is here to enable and empower 3MEF to fight now, right? The battle is already gone, going on right now on the cyber domain. We need to make sure it's operating in real time so that 3MEF can do what they need to do when they need to do it. So um, we talked a little bit about our area responsibility. Uh, I just want to point out that 3MEF, right, might have certain areas of responsibility uh, that are assigned right now and different plans, but wherever the war goes, wherever the MEF goes, we will go as the network battalion to make sure that they can do what they need to do. So who we are, and this applies to actually all of the net battalions, because I want to make sure that I'm not just talking about our own, although we know we're the best, sorry for, no, just, that's, that was for Colonel Walker, he is a very motivated awesome commander. Um, but w the, that top line there, the reality is, is that aligning the net battalions and activities directly under U.S. Cyber Command is a big change. And it's really critical because in order to defend and operate on the cyber domain, it's good that our chain of command is directly and laser focused um, on the same thing. So we, don't, we no longer have the bifurcation. We no longer have seven different organizations that might get different priorities and tasks. Um, and, and so that's a really big that's a big change that McSen C2 brought. Um, you can see some of the numbers about third network battalion. The bottom line is each battalion is sized to where we were able to get based on the resources and structure that the Marine Corps had under the MITSI construct. 
So as you can imagine, we still have some evolving to do as we figure out what the realities of operating in this new organizational architecture are. And, and so that's what we're going through right now. So we've only activated uh, on February 25th. So it's only been less than, what, two months now? Um, so, so things are moving quickly. But in order to, um, to share kind of what we've done, I don't want to be the person to, to tell you that. Um, so in a minute, we're going to bring up a, a young Lance Corporal because that's really where the, the, the rubber uh, hits the road here. So we are going to yeah, come, come get ready because we, we don't want a moment uh, to go by before you get a chance to get up here. But how are we going to operate? Here's some of our foundational ways of doing business. The warfighter is always the priority. That should always have gone unsaid, but it's important to say it. Words matter, right? Words matter. Semantics matter. And we're going to provide the immediate support. We already provide that immediate support for the warfighter. So within our operations uh, uh, construct, we have a way of coding all of the uh, exercises and all the operations that are going on so that we can tell in real time on the big screens in the op center the difference between an ongoing uh, action, an ongoing operation or exercise versus something that might be a normal uh, change or, or something that might not be as impactful. So that's something that was always concerning of the, from the fleet, right, is they, they need immediate action when they are in the Philippines or in Tinian or in uh, Guam or wherever they are operating, they cannot afford to make a phone call to a service desk somewhere and be told, oh, yeah, well, you know, it's Friday night, somebody will be in on Monday. That is absolutely uh, a real story, but can't happen anymore, right? So immediate support and ubiquitous communications. Communications is the key. We need the fleet, we need the customers to know what we know in real time. The more they know about what, what's going on, the better they feel and the better um, chance there is of mission success. Uh, if any of you all have been S6s or G6s or even N6s in the Navy, under these enterprise environments, sometimes you feel unempowered to help your bosses, and that's really uncomfortable. So as a third network battalion, we want to make absolutely sure that that S6 at the lowest organizational level in the Marine Corps knows what's happening now. So when their major colonel general, depending on what level you are, asks what's going on with the network, they can tell them. They don't have to say, oh, let me make a phone call. Right? So we are building tools to make sure that that's possible. We're building um, dashboards so that if you are the S6 in an air wing unit, you can have that up in your office and know what's happening in real time on the network in our segment of the mix end. So uh, we're doing daily operational syncs, all the things you would think about doing in an operational environment, but we're trying to take it a step forward and making sure everybody understands and communicate uh, the things that we're doing. I'm sorry, there's no clock here, so I'm, uh, hopefully I'm not running out of time, but only a few more things that we want to share with you. Bruce, um, you've yes. got about 10 minutes left. Seven? Ten. Ten. Oh, okay. Oh, then I will slow up. Let's talk about Hawaii. Now, um, <laughs> and the parking situation here. That was a fun experience today. So, tenant outreach. Captain Reyes is actually in the audience. He is our OIC for the Hawaii Detachment Det uh, here, and he has uh, just gone above and beyond making sure that those units within K Bay and Camp Smith understand that they have that open relationship with us, making sure that they get what's going on and the changes that are about to happen, the changes that have already happened. And those are critical things, that relationship management doesn't always happen in an IT organization the way that I think it should, um, but luckily for us, our team is really focused on that and doing that. So you've heard we just activated. You've heard that what we want to do. Well, I want to, I'm not going to be the one to share what we've done already because the bottom line is we are here to support Marines, uniform Marines that are here to fight wars, right? And although we have a blended team made up of an enormous amount of contractors, some civil servants and Marines, the reality is, is that we are here so Marines can fight and win wars. So we have asked today one of our most junior and youngest and newest to the Marine Corps uh, Marines to come up and brief you on the things that we have done so far. So I'm going to introduce Lance Corporal Leonardo Mavia to tell you all the rest. Thank you much. Appreciate it. Well, I'll tell you what. Bruce was right about one thing. Their network is the best. <laughs> all right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lance Corporal Leonardo Movia. I joined 3rd Network Battalion in just last year. This is my first duty station, and I'm grateful to be part of the, the great, uh, newest communications unit in the Marine Corps. 
Just like me, Third Network Battalion is new to the core, and we are both full of energy and, ex and ready to support the warfighting mission. Even though our battalion activated less than two months ago, we are already in action and enabling warfighters. Our Marines have already deployed to Thailand, Korea, Australia, and Japan. We created a network control center, and it quickly became the centerpiece of real-time information that runs 24-7. It is led by a lieutenant and enlisted Marines with extensive knowledge of our online systems that ensure when customer needs results, we can provide them. One of the key roles of NCC is to monitor real-world operations and exercises that utilizes MixN. On any given day, we can have over 50 concurrent missions, and that's during peacetime. I'm excited to be sharing this information about deployments because I know that once I finish rotating through all of our sections and get qualified to be part of the Marines that deploy, it means that I will have a chance to go to some of those places as well. Thank you. You know you're doing something right when you've been in the Marine Corps just uh, about a year and then all of a sudden you're briefing a, a group of AFSIA and retired generals. Awesome, good job. We love seeing that. And those are, that's, that is a great example of the type of Marines that we have in the unit. You gotta love the Cyber, Cyber Tiger, Cyber. Um, but, but we, do, we do love the logo, and it's a really motivated team. We got, you know, we got Marines running around all over Iwakuni and Okinawa and Hawaii wearing our, our T-shirts and logos. You can see some of our gang here in matching uh, Hawaiian shirts, if you looked closely, but uh, remember their personal space. Um, Ura, That has our logo in it. All of those things mean something, because building a team that can provide the kind of support that we know that we're mandated to provide means that we need a team that's uh, motivated uh, and roaring to go. Boom, had to put in a dad joke there. So that, that's all we had to share today. Um, we're happy to take any questions if that's part of the um, opportunity. We have some of the technicians here as well that can answer any questions. We've got a couple of uh, microphones in the aisles if you wanna step up and shout out a question. This was the time when the people from the team were supposed to throw darts at me, verbal darts, but, but if you don't have any questions, that's okay. I'll be here for another day or two. You know, our entire team is excited to talk to everybody. Um, and, and the bottom line is if you know how to do business better or you think you have a way that we can help the Marine Corps mission, let us know. We know that we don't have all the answers. We know nobody has all the answers. So we want help in getting the answers. Thank you so much, FCA. We really appreciate uh, having this opportunity to share our new mission with you. Bruce, uh, nice call, uh, Movia, uh, Movia, is that close enough, pretty close, Movia? Uh, great job, welcome, welcome to the Corps. Uh, thank you for all joining us today. Uh, on behalf of uh, your presentation, you're at least gonna get coined uh, by the FCA chapter uh, for a great job. And uh, if you haven't noticed, it's lunchtime. And uh, I'm, I'm amazed. How many of you are, are, are active duty here or representing uh, one of the organizations? I know that whole group over there probably is. Okay, that's good. That's good to know. I appreciate you staying for this session. It's an important session, uh, and uh, you know how hard uh, everybody works and pick their brain and find out what they need, and uh, maybe they can come back and find uh, a, help you find a solution. Okay, thank you very much. Enjoy your lunch and enjoy the rest of the of the day.